Welcome back, denizens of Earth, to the StarCraft II World Championship Series. That's right. It's time for more WCS Winter America's Edition. I'm Nathanius, joined by Zombie Grub, as we make our way into the lower match here in our Group H for Happy Days. As uh, we're going to have a TVP coming up for you. Like Terran vs. Protoss, Zombie Grub? I sometimes like it. Sometimes, ooh. Am I playing it or am I watching it? Mm, watching in this case. All right, that's fine then. Okay. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> uh, we do have, oh wait, everybody's here. Everyone's pretty much ready to go. I'm just going to tell them they can go. You guys don't want to listen to us anyway. What do we have to say? Um, but yeah, we're going to start off on Automaton. Cyark had a rough go of it against yes. Haas. Haas just kind of built zealots and bashed his face in. Didn't go too well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it just looked like Haas had better macro, better game sense for the matchup. Yep. But maybe also Cyrek was thrown off because Haas wasn't doing Haas things. Yeah, you expect Haas to cheese, right? You expect him to be weird. Yeah. But we did not get that. So Firefly, after dropping against Puck, 2 will go up against him. We'll get our TVP action going. TVP really seems to rile up the chat. Why is that, Zombie Grub? Because it is one of the most balanced well-designed matchups in StarCraft. And that's just, you know, sometimes people just, their mind's blown that something could be so perfect as TVP. Exactly. I agree. We are loaded in on the right side here of Near Automaton Ladder Edition. We have the blue Protoss player. He is Firefly. Is he going to get canceled in this group? Ha! <laughs> in the bottom left. As the Red Darren, he is Cyark. Did you like Firefly? Yeah, of course. Feature is one of the other great Nathans of planet Earth. <laughs> Nathan He's Fabricant, cool. Nathan Fillion. And uh, there's not too many other Nathans, honestly, that come to mind. Oh, you're right. I mean, it's not like Chris. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's it. It's just, me and it's just me and Nathan Fillion holding it up. <laughs> For the Nathans out there, shout out to any Nathans in the chat. Exactly. There are plenty of Jessicas. It was the most popular name in 91 and 90, and I think even 89 in America. It was popular. So. Yeah. My little, brother, man. my little brother was cursed because they had that big hurricane, and then he got named Andrew. That, was, that wasn't, oh. didn't have as good a story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Reaper opening here from Cyark. He did open with Marines in his earlier games today, so this is a little bit of a change. It's a good map for Reapers. Yeah. Meanwhile, our Protoss player goes Nexus, then Cybernetics Core, so he is doing the I'm not being proxied build, which will allow him to get up a lot of probes. Mm -hmm. Cyark going for that SCV scout, very safe play here. You know, after expecting Haas to be Haas, and he wasn't, now you're facing another uh, Chinese Protoss this time, and Maybe you think uh, he could also be cheesy because you watch the PVPs, so you really have to be on guard, even though yep. it's possible. Firefly loves macroing in this. In this, yeah, you know, that's Maybe, something you, you can know, do. We were talking about it. Now, listen, I'm never anybody to make comments about balance. Okay, I of personally not. agree with you that everything in this match was completely perfect. But Fear Dragon backstage was saying oh, that, guy. that Haas didn't cheese the Terran player because he doesn't <laughs> need to in this metagame. And I said, Fear Dragon, that's absurd. I can't believe you would suggest such a notion. So perhaps we'll see just another Twilight Council going into Blink for Firefly, into, you know, Charge, Double Forge, Warp Prism, lots of Stalkers, lots of Zealots. Yeah, uh, basic, basic stuff. And the Reaper sees all of that basic stuff. So we might have to talk more about what Sire can possibly do to change things up in this matchup. So what type of TVP does he like to play when he's not facing someone he believes to be weird? Yeah, his build looked very uninspiring versus Haas. And I say that because he opened with a 1-1-1, right? F Reaper expand. Uh -huh. This is not abnormal, but he didn't try anything other than he had a little Banshee play, which was cute, but it was not. It didn't really do anything at the start until uh, the army was basically outside his base. Then he was able to get some probes. But I would like to see a mind drop or, you know, a cheeky little Liberator Hellion run by, something like that. He's playing extremely cautiously, extremely defensively. We have the Marines. They have the tanks. But he didn't really show us that he wanted to do a Marine what? tank push. He was like, I'm just going to defend. Why did that Reaper? Uh, get him! Get him! No! Yeah. The Reaper saw it, but Cyark didn't. That's too bad. Yeah, just to your, to your point about you know how much scouting is being done, I wanted to highlight just how much 
Syrak was running around for this exact thing, and it looks like he might have done it too soon. As he's already checked over here, so he may not check again anytime soon. Lucian Phoenix is going to see exactly what Syrak is planning. Maybe to have a tank, and there is a second tank. There we go. Should be more than one. A Viking. Uh, it's actually a very weird choice because he knows it was a Twilight Council opener, and there's not really anything else the Viking helps out with. Landed, it's still good versus Protoss, but it is one of yeah, those things you don't, to. Yeah, but you don't uh, open with landed Vikings versus Protoss. Yes, Protoss. exactly. That's not a thing. Maybe he's worried about an Oracle for some reason. I don't know. Yeah, that would be weird, though, right? It would help against a Prism, right? He died to Warp Prisms, so. That's true, and it would help if you think you were going to deal with like an Observer to, to do blank shenanigans, I guess. Um, oh, Firefly's doing the build. Yeah, so more importantly than the Viking, I think that might have been more like an autopilot thing, but Firefly is, you know, he's got the proxy pylon up, which Cyrek tried to scout for and missed, uh, and he's about to run into the Terran army without stam or combat shield, so the Blink Stalkers will be able to out-micro it. Yep, just pick off a few Marines here and there. Put the Chrono Boost into the Twilight Council and start up charge. There we go. This is how you do it. Um, this is the build for PVT. It's very good. This allows you to capitalize on all those probes to Chrono Boost out early. Although, strangely enough, Firefly, he doesn't actually have uh, a significant worker advantage. And we do have Harass hitting. That Reaper was in the natural. The Viking landed in the main. But shield batteries are a thing, so it doesn't kill anything. Goodbye, Viking. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Gets out of there. Might come back again later. Try to combo with the Reaper was almost a really good idea. But you're right about the the probe comments. This actually isn't as uh, good of an economy as Firefly. Cyark should add. not be ahead in workers. This is Agreed. this is purely just work. Like Cyark, this to me it says that Firefly like faked the third base. He didn't actually mean to use it, which is really confusing because yeah. he's building three probes at a time. Yeah, and he's getting a robo. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, he's getting 1-1, one, one, but he's adding five gates. Like, is he attacking? Is he not attacking? I can't tell. Make up your mind, please. Well, at this point, I guess we're going to go into that, that later game where he's going to meet Cy Arc's push on his side of the map. But, yeah, you might be right about initially he was planning on being a lot more aggressive. So he was holding off on uh, either building probes or chronoing yeah. probes. He stopped building least. probes for a while. And yeah. um, I don't, like this build, the, the, the thing that makes Protoss good in this phase of the game versus Terran is that you have that third base saturated really fast. And the Terran's still locked in on two bases, by the way. So it's not like he doesn't have that economic leverage, but it's not didn't it's not as fast as it otherwise should be. Like Terran should just not be ahead of workers against Protoss. That's yeah. it's purely because of cut probes there or forgotten probes. So that's really gonna cut into how big the army is later, right? And that's really important to note here. If it was gonna be a fifteen minute game, eh, you know, okay, they got the storm, like whatever. But this is not gonna be that long of a game. Sark is gonna two base all in and having however many less zealots because you didn't have that super baller economy would actually be very important to note. Yep, Sark, he's got a good supply lead here too. It does feel weird to see it happen like this. Firefly is going to start adding in some more Zealots. He's getting a Warp Prism. Most important thing for Cyark right now is that he is getting his 2-2. He is using the Double Forge the way that you need to. Protoss gets their strength from supposedly having that economic lead early on and then dumping all of those extra resources into units that otherwise don't trade. And when I say don't trade, I mean and even supply. The Marine Tank Marauder smashes Zealot Stalker. But when the Protoss has that third for so long and it's saturated for so much longer than Terran, that's when this army becomes hard to beat because you have so many Zealots, there are so many Stalkers, and your ability to overwhelm the Terran becomes huge. But Cyark has a large army moving out right now, and uh, I don't know if Firefly has enough. I'd love to see an SCV pull with yep. this. Th an SCV pull here might be what he needs to, to crack this because if Firefly can take this battle long enough and get a couple rounds of warp ins off his saturated three bases then it's gonna be rough i agree absolutely at least like 10 scds i think do add a lot versus the the charge lots but we have another issue to talk about which is the warp prism sorry that's a pylon there we go and it can start actually Use killing it. scvs get it in there you got to distract Cyark. If yep. he drops the prism, he gets the side benefit of being able to block him there. Is he going to Guardian Shield or Force Field? Okay, well, the tanks are sieged. He's not choosing yet. We should see an anti armor missile. He has enough Zealots. Oh, that anti armor missile so good. All right, well, most of the Zealots oh. have that negative three armor there. The Widowmine gets picked off. Excuse me, the Widowmine picks off the Observer, and Cyark has a really good push here. Now, the counterattack, this is what he needed. This is what Firefly needed to buy at the time. Mm. He's got, I feel like you got to wait a little bit for that Dorito cannon, but he's going to push out. There's the Guardian Shield, and 
see this this so you're so hot and then you're cold and the zealots all die to the siege tanks just pull the scvs and go with a man he lost 20 he had pulled the SCVs, i think he already went, i think he actually could have already busted him here but now so firefly is, is getting so much time to keep doing these warp ins and i'm nervous yeah I'm he's nervous. he's absolutely just shutting down the economy there's not going to be any follow-up here even if firefly loses his third nexus for instance like that's not an option for him as he has killed so many SCVs, he could maybe give his third Nexus as long as he had a good enough army to clean it up when it was all said and done. I think Tasteless said it best in GSL at some point. He was like, well, there's no, we don't have to worry about Zealot counterattacks when you pull all your SCVs. What are they going to kill, right? You're not making <laughs> anything anyway. Exactly. Now, Cyarch basically, I think he has at this point right now given up on defending his base, but he did have a lot of reinforcements that were kind of wasted. You know, that was like six Marauders, I want to say, that tried to defend. I imagine if there were six more Marauders on the front line. Plus all the SCVs, right? Yeah. Um, so that army supply is even, but Firefly has the 2-2 upgrades. He now has the high ground to buy even more time. Uh, there are going to be other Raven usages, I suppose. It used one anti-missile, that was it. Now it has full energy almost again. But uh, come on, just, I just, yeah, I'm, I'm still surprised he's trying to hold on his main base. He should not even be paying attention to it. Nope. Nope. I guess he can't push up the ramp He has either. two SCVs protecting his main base. They, no, lift your buildings and try to win here. By the way, it's not going to work. Yeah, not at this point. If he had pulled his SCVs and gone at that first moment, I, when he got that Dorito cannon, you know, the SCVs do bonus damage, too, from that. Like, yes, it would have it would have helped a lot. But now the Archons here what the? are going to be so... Wait, did he warp in Zealots in that spot? Yeah, that's so funny. Oh, my. Well, that's three Zealots not helping. <sighs> that's a little weird. Uh, well, if Firefly does that a couple more times, I guess. The Widow Mines have gotten a couple of extra shots, and they really probably should have. Again, the Raven still a very important tool here. Maybe... I'm going to guess it's another anti armor missile, but also interference matrix could happen on the Archons as he grabs one that was very low. But this just isn't enough bio anymore. Like, this was yeah. supposed to be rallied forward. Four tanks and three Marauders. A StarCraft game you do not <laughs> win with. Nah. <clears throat> uh, just stronger decisions from Cyarch, I think, would have really, really won him this game. But Firefly, wait, buying all this time. He should have just put all his best CVs and he would have been able to there crack it third much earlier and then seeds the natural. But now. The A move of the century, <clears throat> straight through, rip and tear, GG, Firefly takes game number one. Well, we expected that, so the just A move concave made a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, you know, Cyarch did go for like the third base, like I'm going to take the game long in both maps against Haas. Mm -hmm. So this was, I think, a better build. These two base yeah. pushes from Terran versus Paras are good for a reason. They hit at pretty much the best time, which is right before 2-2. And generally, before there's anything other than just Stalker Zealot, maybe there's the Sentry or two, maybe an Immortal. But um, when it gets protracted out that long, then you have two, two. Then he adds in Archons, and mm -hmm. eh. yep. once there's Archons on the map, the SCV pool becomes useless because two yeah. Archons will just be goodbye all your workers. Absolutely, that's not fun. Yeah, I love. I like the build choice. I would like to see him do it again, and then just really commit to it. You know, yeah. like just pull the SCVs from the get go, and then if there's a war prism, unless you coincidentally have enough in the the natural, because sometimes that does happen. Yeah. You know, four zealots, maybe you have enough, um, but if you don't, then just pull everything anyways. Like, you gotta you know, commit. You gotta show no fear. Exactly. Okay? You don't. You don't half ask someone to prom. All right, Cyarch. You gotta put yourself out there. Be bold, and attack that Protoss with everything you've got. Yeah, especially because, you know, kind of forgot about it for a second, but Firefly did have that unideal buildup. He was at yeah. the lower probe he, count. Yeah, he, 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 like, stalled like he was going to do a two-base charge lot all in with the prism and then didn't. Um, so. It was a, it was, it could have, would have, should have been a good game for Cyarch. Is the point of that, but. Oh, well, we are going into Kairos Junction for game number two. I think that based on the results of this first game, I can definitely see Cyarch bringing it back. He had just a few areas where he could have maybe tightened things up, but then again, perhaps we'll see a more economic opening from Firefly and he'll just roll out of control even faster. Well, in the bottom right, it's his choice. He's up one, so he can have a little bit of flexibility. It is the blue Protoss Firefly. One to zero against this gentleman in the Northwest, our Japanese Terran player. He is Cyarch. Yeah, you know, Japan might be the next big, well, I don't want to say the next big StarCraft country, but it is going to be perhaps a hot topic of this year since we have Cyarch introducing the world 
in WCS to Japanese play, but then also it's cool. yeah, you had the WSG tournament that happened recently. WSG has got a lot of cash. As well. Yep, there's a weekly Japanese tournament that gets a decent bit of a publicity. So Gotta keep pushing that PC PC yeah. gaming in Japan. It's making oh, yeah. it happen. There's such an interesting history with that, by the way. Like, why J Japan's more well known for its console game? Well, all those console companies, like Nintendo's, there, rare. Yeah, there, right? but why weren't you know? But the more interesting thing is like, why aren't the Koreans console gamers as well? And that's because Japanese products were actually banned for a while during basically the build-up period of consoles. Interesting. Yeah. I was not aware of that. Yeah, that's that's why I said it's an interesting history I that just figured, us here. I just figured that the country of Korea knew Brood War would come out at some point, and they were like, <laughs> look, we can't be console guys if Brood War comes out in 98, man. Yeah. There were other things as well. You know, PC bongs got popular. Korea actually made the infrastructure to, to have the baller internet they have now. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, all those things happen too. But Dude, shout out to all the countries that invest in telecommunications and all of that stuff, fiber optic networks. Yeah, shout out to those countries. <laughs> Not this one, <coughs> anyway, um, so Cyark. He's doing that build, by the way. He's going for the Marine here. Okay. After the Reaper. One Reaper, then Marine. So it's uh, very similar to the last game in terms of the opening. Not skipping the Reaper. Firefly's got a probe going on toward the top side as the Reaper makes its way into the main. Stalker being chrono boosted out. If the Reaper gets a probe kill or two. It's going to feel really nice, but he doesn't want to risk losing it, I guess. He wants to check the whole base first. Well, he'd be right. He's about to see the Twilight Council. See, oh, he did spot it. He clicked on it, too. Okay, good. Uh, now, Firefly has that pro probe. We'll give him close attention to that, as it does look like it's going to be setting up for Hi another Dark Shrine. proxy. Hide the Dark Shrine. Proxy at Robo. Um, it might just be the pylon that he set down. Remember last Stardust game. would do, like, a one-gate expand, and then ah. he would... And like uh, one of those weird maps, he would go to the corner and just build seven gateways around one pylon. Yes, yes, I do. Oh, I remember being a Jadong fan, for instance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's well. Right. <laughs> 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 not, not a great time. So this time, the probe is found by the Reaper. Remember, there was that awkward. That's really good. Last That's game. A really good pickoff. Yeah, not that it really contributed much to the rest of the game. That proxy pylon didn't do it. The I warp prism did. I do think that that pylon has some value when you put it close enough to the edge of the map. That if he tries to send out like a medevac around the bottom, oh, then yeah. the pylon should see it. So I don't, I don't hate it. Like if he had just put a random pylon on the top of the map, I, I wouldn't be against it if he never proxied anything there. There's some Protoss players that if you fall down, like if you're behind against them, they'll do that to you. Puck is a big one I know. Like whenever. Whenever I like play against Pac or I watch his stream, as soon as he has any type of lead, you just see the probe just put pylons on every like possible spot mm. like where you could catch a medevac on the edge of the map. And then it's just that map vision is so nice. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe later, as the probe did die and Firefly has been well, the last game ended kind of kinda of quickly. Hussein Phoenix doesn't quite scalp the starports. No, it doesn't at all, so it didn't see the tech lab on in this either. Yeah. I feel like you gotta assume that there will be a starport, but we have right. seen two we have had the two racks factory pushes with no starport. So it's not like it's unheard of for there to for the starport to be skipped. But something I'm gonna try to keep my eyes on here is that worker count, because we talked about it on the last game. Third command center for Cyarch, by the way. I'm already um, <laughs> Third base, shitty though. Yeah. You haven't killed any probes yet. We'll see how that works I out. I don't know, Kev. I mean, yeah, no. Nah, you gotta kill probes. I'm sorry. You have to do some some worker damage early on versus Protoss. It's it's like necessary at this point. Well, it's also in a very vulnerable position unless you had a bunker and a tank, which he did not go for a tank at. at yeah, the yeah, yeah. This game. is the easiest to poke command center of all time. That's a good thing to mention as well. Time to go. Auto turret is where the energy is gonna go on that Raven. So we'll back off for the 10 second duration and then come back and harass that base even more. Mm -hmm. Charges on the way, one, one, additional four warp gates and the SCB building it picked off once again. There's the siege tank. tank. Does the siege tank block the entire, actually I didn't click on it. There is a spot where he can poke the command center outside of tank range. Can't really get the SCB that easily anymore though. Right here. Yeah, it is kind of over and done with. It, it was actually more than I think most people expect because the tank is usually first, not the side Yes, yes, yeah, so you usually do get that tank. That tank has become such a key part of TVP in this early game to deal with all these blink builds, especially you know since blink is cheaper, people go for it faster, and uh, warp gate finishes faster, so those stalkers come with that pressure faster. Mm-hmm. 
So I mentioned that Starport up being scouted, it would have, you know, we saw the Raven obviously, but to have the follow-up Banshees that that kind of otter later time might be a surprise to our Protoss, who doesn't really have a lot of protection against that. Obviously the Stalkers are on the front as well. I'm still not happy with how few probes Firefly gets out. Maybe he's, is he putting his Chrono Boost more so into like his warp gates or the forges? I'm not sure. But uh, I feel like he should have like so many more. I feel like when I watch a, and you know, this is, I'm not just trying to trash on him, but I'm just saying when I think about like, we look at a guy like, uh, like Showtime playing PVT, you see that third base saturated almost immediately. But this Banshee, good pressure here because that robo facility was a little bit late in terms of the overall setup. The first observer's about to come out. Mm -hmm. But eight, nine probe kills is insane. That is good. huge for Cyark. Now I'm feeling good about him because one Cloak Banshee should not just fly across the map and kill 10 probes. It is one of those things though, right? Because you went for a third CC, it was just generally a later build. Well, that surprise can help, and that's what happened here. It's just like, why is the Banshee hitting at this timing? It also means that any probes it gets isn't as impactful as it would have been two minutes if ago. If it had been earlier. That's true. Right. That's true. And we also have to keep in mind that despite everything, Firefly still hasn't taken the third. He's flying it down there, but uh, there are some not so friendly units that could be. Oh, he's going to fly away. Or, or, or excuse me, they will walk away. Stalkers don't fly. No, not yet. Starcraft 3. Yet? <laughs> don't, don't suggest such things, Zombie Grub. The Stalker does go back to check to see if the third CC is down here, and it finds it. Lots of units actually just being sent all over the place. So you're talking about pylons. Firefly sends out zealots and observers. Uh, anything, any basically that scouting is good. He gets a uh, hallucinate phoenix in here as well. Things you're looking for at around seven and a half minutes with third CC. Probably more about like, do they have a second factory? Because we have seen that factory based style come up to play. How fast is their second starport? Um, Ghost Academy sometimes, if they're planning the three base all in, an SEV pool can occur yep. too. But other than that, you, you see what you expect, right? Five barracks and starport pumping medevacs. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is about as standard as like a setup you can get is the question becomes, you know what? Actually, I really like Cyrix's position. He's at 69 SCVs, and Firefly only has 53 probes. So that means that this third base is still not completely saturated. And that the whole reason why the fast third is good is that you do saturate it really fast. So let's see. Cyrix's army is oh, not no. in position to defend the third base. The tank's unseaged at the worst possible time. So Firefly is going to try to pull him apart right here. Prism hits the main base. I'm so sorry for jinxing you, buddy. And then the rest of the army is going <laughs> to hit that third. Uh, this is all hitting as the upgrades finish, so at least Stim's here to chase everything down. And army to army, Cyark is okay. So he would take this on, for instance, if it wasn't for the force fields. But so many SCVs are going to go down, and Firefly is even going to be able to evacuate, get 2-2 two -two for later. This main base is just not being dealt with right now. This is bad stuff for our Terran. Yeah, Charger Zealots in the main is brutal, savage, wrecked. And these Marines and Marauders are cutting back, but they're going to die. I will say, very briefly, this army was trading okay, but now the 2-2 is finishing, and especially that plus-two armor with the Zealots. And that's where things get a little bit more tricky, Zamba Grub. Oh, he was chasing down Stalkers. He grabbed a few sentries, but then charge lot reinforcements came in here to a very, very injured bio army. And Firefly will take this fight as well. So, I mean, it's still... You know, kind of evenish army supply, but more <laughs> economy is being killed here. Upgrades did finish, and Cyark has lost any advantage he had before the SCVs. Oof. Oof, indeed. Yeah, this is just painful. Cyark is uh, super dead now, what we say? 60 probes to yes. 35 SCVs. Yes. Nothing aggressively on the map. The only thing that Firefly hasn't done is taken a fourth base, but I guess he doesn't really like building probes that much anyway. <laughs> right. Archive starts up. 3-3 three, three is being chrono boosted, and I really think like that's... Cyarch's never getting 2-2. Two, two. So even if Firefly can't kill him, at some point 3-3 three, three will finish, and then his zealots will become uh, Kryptonians. <laughs> They'll be pretty good. Cyarch is going to try and hold with the help of the Muda Mines as well as a choke. So Firefly has taken his time here, but there's the War Prism once again, picking Zealots up into the main, forcing a reaction, and then... It just requires so much to kill the Zealots that get dropped into the main base. Like, you can't just send, you know, four, even eight Marines to go kill those four Zealots, and especially you don't know if there's going to be more warped in. So you need to bring a huge chunk of your army, which opens up the front once again. It's going to try and fight the Stalkers, gets one of them, kills a Marine and blinks back. Uh, that's something. Sending down his third CC again, but as he moves out of position... There's the warp prism. It's there it coming. Is. There it is. It's coming. He runs back to deal with it, but uh, Firefly finally adds on that fourth base, 3-3, three, three, and Storm. 
So, uh, while these zealots are running and that warp prism tries to get away... Oh wait, no, it's not trying to get away. He might? Yeah, he gets it. Nice good, nice good kill there. Uh, something in the main base of Firefly died. It's not even... The remnants of it aren't even there anymore, but something was sent over there that was cleaned up huh. uh, without killing probes. And 3-3 three, three and Storm are almost done. So oh. we're going to have 3-3 three, three, Mass Gateway versus 1-1 one, one Bio. Uh, that's going to be fun. Yeah. I, I think uh, for, for anybody out there with their thoughts on PVT, whatever you think, if you're down four upgrades, you you usually just die in any matchup, actually. 1-1 uh, yep. one, one, one does not 3-3 three, three beat. It's going to be sad. We're going to watch Zealots run forward and then just not die ever. Yep. And then Storm will hit. and then I'll never forget the infamous Roddy clip, and this was from like four years ago in Heart of the Swarm. Where he's like, the Terran player has 1-1. One, one. And he's like, my plus three is done. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to A-move, get up, and go uh, go get myself okay. a Stroop waffle. And he just had the camera follow the Zealots. And this Terran player is going like 800 APM. And he's like, you don't have upgrades. Your units can't kill anything. <laughs> and I don't know what to tell you. Oh, that was a... That was that was good. Yeah. Here comes the final attack. Cyarch is not in position. He doesn't realize the attack's on the way. He sees it now. But what does he do against it? God, the command center dies so fast. Yeah, everything here is just going to get vaporized. 3-3, three, three, Protoss, doing some good stuff. Uses Interference Matrix on two of the Immortals. I actually really like that. But maybe Dorito Cannon on Ooh. the Zealots would have been better. Good mine hits. Yeah, very good mine hits. But there's still more Zealots, zealots. where that came from. Not dying, though. GG. Firefly with a 2-0 victory over Cyarch. is going to eliminate our Japanese contender here from Group H for how would that feel? Felt like three three versus one one. Yeah, three three versus one one. Never, never a good spot. That's why you pull. That's why you do that marine tank attack. You pull everything. Armories are really expensive. <laughs> uh, armories don't kill probes. It's better to just fight before you get there, in my opinion. That's why. That's why Terran's like that in two base pushes. Yeah. But. Well, Sayak showed his best for uh, his first WCS appearance. Got to imagine some nerves were in there as yeah. well. It's a lot of pressure, man. Yeah, a lot of pressure, a lot of nerves. And you know what? You know what? takes pressure off for me and cools my nerves sitting down and watching Jeff in control Robert Robinson talk about Starcraft with Artie Mictosis that's on the pylon show every Wednesday go check him out go tell them that Nathaniel sent you and uh, that they should bring me on more because I'm extremely handsome and belong on that show uh, that's uh, twitch.tv slash in control TV Shout outs to those guys putting on great, awesome, consistent StarCraft content. If you want to know what's going on in the scene, that is the place to be. Uh, everything in the scene, by the way. They, I think half the show is like, this week in StarCraft, because there's so many things happening in StarCraft all the time. It's like yes. a, yeah. <sighs> so with that being said, we do have a couple matches left here for our Americas group. Coming up next, your winner's match. It's going to be Haas versus Puck. And then the loser of that will face off against Firefly on a tightrope over lava. We'll be back with that next series.